Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we focused on how deep learning can be useful not only for image segmentation, image classification, but also for other tasks such as edge detection. And if you haven't watched those, I definitely recommend going back and having a look at those, although that is not related to what we're going to talk about in this video and in the next couple of videos uh, that will come out. And if you want to be notified about those, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. And again, I request you as usual to hit the thanks button if you feel extra generous. Now, I am going to provide a quick overview of this deep learning based uh, denoising, noise to void, to be precise. Uh, I'm going to provide you a quick overview of that in this video. In fact, I'm also going to mention a couple of traditional ways that uh, uh, you can denoise your images, but primarily focus on understanding noise to void. And in the next couple of videos, let's actually get our hands dirty by uh, interacting with the code and denoising uh, RGB images. And in the video after that, I am going to talk about how you can denoise multi-dimensional images. Like if you have a Z stack of uh, X, you know, a Z stack of color images or multi-channel images, how can you denoise? So that is the plan for the next couple of tutorials. But before uh, any delay, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic, which is denoising. And the common denoising approaches, as you probably know, uh, there are classical ways and there are deep, uh, deep learning approaches and the classical approaches, I covered uh, videos on each of these topics, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'll briefly explain what block matching 3D filtering is, although I did a dedicated video on this. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to deep learning, you can use deep CNNs, autoencoders, GANs, noise to noise, and the focus of this uh, video, this tutorial is going to be on noise to void and at least understanding that at a very high level. So next week when we actually get into the code, you know what's happening behind the scenes when you import the library, noise to void. Okay, so classical ways, uh, you know, Ga Gaussian, it's just a convolution, right? I mean, median, uh, is another way. Median is great if you have salt and pepper type of noise. Most of the other approaches do not work if you have salt and pepper, but median filter definitely works great in that situation. My favorite one, my favorite uh, denoising algorithm when it comes to classical is block matching 3D filtering. It works great, it works amazing. In most cases, when it comes to deep learning, my favorite is noise to void. And in both of these cases, you do not need any ground truth. Uh, so getting into uh, block matching and 3D filtering, as the name suggests, it does some sort of a block matching. And after that, it does this 3D filtering technique. And it first uh, suggested back in 2007, and it's extensively used primarily for tomography and MRI images, but it also works for any other types of uh, images. And it's very similar to non-local means uh, in, uh, in the sense that, okay, you have like a reference frame right here, reference patch and the algorithm finds other patches that are kind of similar to this one and uh, it performs certain operations. Again, what does it do? You have a noisy image, it identifies a patch, it identifies other patches that are similar, creates a block. Uh, think of this as a 3D stack based on, uh, based on all of these uh, patches and then it transforms it. So think of this as transforming this 3D into a Fourier space and then on that space, it actually performs hard thresholding and then it performs inverse transform to bring that Fourier space back into the real uh, X, Y, Z space. And then uh, it blockwise estimates, aggregates, and then it performs a second step. And now it actually does exactly what it did in the step number one, like identify these patches and uh, all the stuff, except after the 3D transformation, it's going to use a Wiener filtering instead of hard thresholding, and then everything else is the same. If that makes sense to you, great. You're very smart. If that doesn't uh, make sense to you, you're not dumb. It's just that uh, this is very high level. Go look at this paper and uh, get better understanding if you really would like to le learn more about BM3D block matching and 3D filtering. Now the goal for this video is to make sure that you understand what noise to void is at a high level. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into that topic. But uh, I forgot, I put an example denoised image of this block matching 3D noise right there. And again, Sigma is one of the parameters that you can control when you do this block matching 3D filtering. And you can see that's the confocal, that's, a, that's a, again, a confocal image, especially if you're imaging live samples. Uh, you're bound to have some noise and that noise need to be cleaned up so you can look into the science that's being conveyed by this sample, right? So that is exactly our goal here. 
and with block matching 3D filtering with a sigma of 0 0.02, it does a decent job as you can see in denoising it. And if you look at this small region, you have uh, you are not losing that resolution right there and it seems to be denoising okay. Although you will find that some artifacts, like in this case, you see some sort of a banding right there. I see vaguely some sort of a banding and that gets worse as you increase the sigma. So if I go to sigma 0 0.03, the image looks much cleaner, right? I mean, the image looks much more denoised, but if you just focus on certain regions, the image is a bit more blurred and you see some sort of additional artifacts right there. Again, those artifacts are dependent on your sigma and a couple of other parameters, but this is, despite these uh, minor artifacts, this is an amazing traditional approach for denoising. Okay, now let's look at the deep learning approaches. Well, autoencoders based architecture is a way to go if you have a pair of noisy and noise free images. If you have a clean image of the same scene, then uh, you can train the algorithm using uh, the noisy images as input and noise free image as your output, right? So this is uh, a way you can uh, uh, clean up your images, but how often do you have noise-free images that correspond to your noisy image? Very rarely. If you do have that, if you do have that luxury, then I definitely recommend something called noise-to-noise -noise algorithm uh, because it learns uh, from the pair of noisy and uh, noise-free. Oh, in fact, uh, you don't even need a noise-free image for noise-to-noise. -noise. You need a pair of noisy images with different levels of noise. So it can be a noisy image one, the same scene with a different noise. Again, it's very challenging for us to get our hands on those type of data sets. Oftentimes, we may only have a noisy image that we want to denoise. And this is exactly where noise to white can definitely help. And let's see how that works again at a high level. This is the paper. Go ahead and search Google search. You'll find you'll find the PDF version online. And it learns directly from noisy images without the need for clean images. And how does it work? Well, uh, the assumption, first of all, is that your image has a structure and noise without structure. Yeah, the actual parts of the image has uh, a some sort of a structure to it and the noise does not have any structure. So basically this is unstructured noise. So if you have like a noise that's in the form of a regular grid pattern on your image or some sort of a horizontal lines, then, then uh, noise to white cannot help you in cleaning up those. But if the noise is like short noise, you know, it's like a random noise everywhere, then uh, this can be a very useful technique. That's because uh, the assumption is that the noise cannot be predicted uh, by looking at the neighborhood pixels, whereas the structure can be predicted by looking at the neighborhood pixels. So that's the basic premise. And uh, that based on that, it actually creates a, it, it relies on a network with a blind spot. What does that mean? Well, if you have a patch, an image patch, and when you're doing a conventional normal uh, neural network, then your target, you are looking at the entire input, like this entire patch uh, in, your, uh, in the receptive field. I have a graphic to further explain this, so don't worry if you don't get it right now. But look at the central pixel right here. The central pixel is also included as part of your target and prediction. But if you look at noise to avoid's receptive field, this central pixel is not included, uh, it's blinded when the network is looking at that patch. So the central pixel is kind of masked uh, when you're training this. And uh, how do you do that? You cannot just drop a pixel out of a patch. You need some information over there. So they came up with some sort of a trick to create a, a blinded network. And uh, the be better way to understanding that is, let's go back to this example where you look at a small patch right there, okay? So let's say that is the patch we are looking at and this is how it looks like. And this is the central pixel. So instead of just dropping the central pixel and having like a value of zero, what they do is they replace the central pixel by randomly selecting any other pixel in this patch. So let's say we randomly identified this pixel and that gets uh, that gets copied over to this central. So that is the modified image that gets used as an input to the network. And uh, what it's going to predict is the target patch is the original input with unmodified pixel value. So this pixel value right here is the same pixel value as before this gets copied. So that is uh, the output. So this is how the network gets trained. 
and uh, the loss gets minimized between these two. And uh, when you apply that onto your uh, image now, then you have your denoised image. So that's the that's the core essence. I hope I did a good job in explaining this. If not, again, uh, the paper obviously does an amazing job in explaining the process. I'm trying to condense it into uh, plain English right here, and hopefully the message gets conveyed. Uh, even otherwise, if you want to look at the advantages of noise to void, here is a comparison again directly from their uh, from their page. As you can see, BM3D is also right there, the block matching 3D filtering, and you can see how noise to void compares for multiple types of images, and also it's uh, let's see uh, i think also from computation point of view it's very efficient uh, so you're not waiting for a few uh, tens of seconds for your image to be denoised again it depends on the image size but the runtime right there is 1.3 seconds and uh, for block matching 3d filtering on that specific image the runtime was 33 seconds so this is slow because it's doing a lot of other things right so so the the segment the denoising time is pretty fast actually compared to other methods again it depends on the image for example here uh that's the peak to signal noise ratio yeah the runtime 4.6 seconds right there 0 0.1 seconds 0 0.1 seconds 5.2 seconds so uh it does an amazing job and it is fast so that's all we need right and uh, let's look at how the same image that i showed you earlier looks like after denoising so there you go this is noise to wide this is a confocal uh, original noisy image noise to wide and if you look at this small region i did not find any artifacts i don't find anything new added information added to these images and you can see how the resolution is still intact i almost would love to say that these images are quantitative uh, hopefully you can do quantitative imaging using this, but I haven't confirmed that with the authors, whether in whether these images are modified to the point where they're not quantitative anymore, meaning you can infer something from the, from the fluorescence intensities. So that I do not know. Again, these authors are reachable via Twitter, so please go ahead if that is, that is, that is your question. Uh, in fact, if that is your question, go ahead and post it as part of the comments right here, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I can reach out to the authors to Get, uh, an answer for you but either way the de for, uh, as far as denoising goes this does an amazing job as you can see so i applied this to this entire time series 3d data set and uh, i'll show the result in a second but here is a quick screenshot and by the way this is a screenshot from a software called zen which is by zeiss and if you use zeiss microscopes you, uh, you probably know what this software is and in a second i'm going to show you the implementation of noise to void in zen uh, to show you how easy it is to actually, uh, or the how easy it is to use in Zen, but more importantly, how the end result looks like. And we'll use a similar, uh, probably the same data set in the next couple of videos. I haven't decided, maybe use the same data set in the next couple of videos uh, to see how uh, the denoising can be done. Well, the next video is about RGB. So the one after that is going to be multi-channel. So that's when we can actually work with this data set. Anyway, uh, uh, look at the comparison. So here is the Gaussian. Gaussian does a good job in cleaning up, but then it the it it uh, blurs your images. And BM3D at 0.2 sigma and a 0.3 and noise to void. And as you can see, noise to void, artifact free, very nice resolution intact right there. Uh, you see these spots right here, not adding much information. It's I mean BM3D. You see how it's saturating certain pixels. I don't know why. I found I find that as I increase my sigma these getting kind of blocky blobby and i am i get uncomfortable uh, after a sigma of uh, 0 0.2 when i am using bm3d noise to void so far did an amazing job for me and as you can see this beautiful visual right there of mitosis life happening right there noisy life very nice clean life on the right hand side so uh, let me quickly jump into Zen to show you. This is not a demonstration of Zen. I don't want to, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, although, if you would like to purchase this uh, noise to void and you want to click uh, solution and not code anything yourself, there are a couple of ways. I believe you can use it in ImageJ uh, for free. Of course, if you have very large multi dimensional data sets, you can use it in uh, commercial software, something like Zen. Uh, you pay something, I have no clue how much it costs, but I'm going to show you how uh, you can use it. And I'll keep this pretty fast, uh, again, because I know most of you may not have Zen, but if you do, uh, consider upgrading to version 3.6 because that's where you will find this IntelliSys denoising. 
module and I've already created a model and all you need to do is go ahead and create a new model, start training, and uh, you can train your own uh, image basically, right? I mean, your own model. And once it's trained, you can use that to segment your future confocal images. So you, it's not like you need to train every time you need to denoise, you save the trained model and then go ahead and denoise your images. So here, this is the, this is the as you can see, I'm going through various Z positions time series. I used this entire thing. All I did is, okay, how many epochs do you want to train this for? And hit train and denoise. And after it's done, I hit finish and uh, I saved the model. And uh, once the model is saved, I just go back and use it on a day-to-day -day day -day, uh, purpose. So it's pretty fast, actually. I mean, I have a relatively old uh, GPU, but still, yeah, what GPU do you have? It recognizes the GPU when you're installing, uh, when you're installing your Zen. And what model do I want to use? LSM mitosis. And you can just hit apply. And it applies this to this entire uh, data set. And it's pretty fast. You see, it's already 14, 15, 16, 17%. But I have already done that. So you can see how the result looks like. There you go. That's the result. That's the original. Result, original, right there. And I can just change the Z positions. And there you go. So that is amazing. I uh, Let's go ahead and get our hands dirty, like I mentioned uh, uh, in the next uh, video. Let's start with uh, just regular RGB images because I assume most of my audience are not microscopists. So uh, even if you're a microscopist, you may be working with RGB images if you're capturing images on a color camera, right? Not on a, uh, on a uh, uh, black and white or a grayscale camera like like you do in confocal and the video after that like i mentioned is going to be multi-channel exactly the same image let's work on this one why not okay so anyway i will see you in a couple of uh, weeks from now